company culture. For example, Apple, which is known for its secrecy, is now under investigation by the Department of Labor after workers claim the company retaliated against them for raising concerns over safety. Here to talk more about this is labor and diversity expert and CEO of Greer Consulting, Jason Greer. Jason, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Hey, thanks for having me. Of course. So Jason, what types of demands are we seeing from workers who want more from not just their jobs, but their employers too? You know, I'm glad you asked that question. You reference Apple, but I think these demands kind of go across the board. When you look at the Apple II movement, you have employees who are basically asking for investigation of sexual harassment, COVID protections, N95 masks, equal pay, and they want people to fight within their organization to fight discrimination. I mean, these are basic human elements that these employees are asking for. And these are really big issues we're tackling as well. So in the example of Apple, how are workers taking on big companies? How are they forcing change? Well, first, who would have ever imagined that we live in a time where the veil of secrecy that's always been Apple was lifted? You have these workers who on December 24th, 50 employee Apples, or Apple employees rather, as retail shops, walked out of their jobs. You know, 20 years ago, you would say that's no kind of walkout. There's only 50 people. But we have to factor that we're not looking at, you know, in terms of the human cost, we're looking at the social media chatter that's gone up. Apple in itself used to be walled off like most organizations, but now you have employees who are communicating via social media and they are basically talking about the unfair treatment that they're experiencing in multiple organizations. What do you make of the timing of this, Jason? Why do you think this is all happening now? Well, I think it's the perfect intersection of 2020, we had COVID, obviously we're in a pandemic, we had the George Floyd moment, and I think workers, but really people across the nation took a greater assessment as to what it means to be an employee, what it means to live life. And I think that workers are basically said, we need to take a stand. And here's the thing, the moment they decided to take a stand, it actually worked. So that's why we're seeing this because it's working. You know, 4.4 million people left their jobs in September. I feel like we continue to see those numbers go up. What are your thoughts about the great resignation and this ongoing trend of people leaving their jobs? Well, I'm the eternal optimist. Look, I've been a consultant for 20 years, and what I generally tell my clients is this. There is a gift in every single issue. And in this particular issue, it's we're being made, we're being positioned to reimagine the workplace. Reimagine having a workplace in which people feel valued, respected. They feel like their managers want to treat them with compassion. They feel like there's upward mobility. But more importantly, they want people to feel like, you know, they want to be part of an organization that makes them feel like they're bigger than uh, what they were before. Right. They want to be valued. Absolutely. What absolutely. about employers who want to provide this type of work environment and they simply don't know where to start with all of this? There are keys in every issue, there are keys in every everything that we do. And I think that when you look at the Apple II movement in itself, they are legitimately telling you what they want. Go to the people. Don't just hide behind the attorneys. Don't just hide behind you know, the no comment statements. Go directly to the employees and ask them what they want. Look, I speak to, in my consulting practice, I speak to thousands of employees per year. And I'm gonna tell you that the thing that I hear over and over again is employees saying, we are tired of dealing with electronic surveys. We're tired of doing engagement surveys. We want our managers, we want people to come directly to us to hear our perspective. Because when we can look them in the eyes, when we can talk to them, when we can see that they care and they see how much we care, now we can get to doing the things that we need to do to make this organization better. Yeah, that direct line of communication is so important. You know, you Absolutely. are a diversity and inclusion expert. I wanted to ask you what you think the state of diversity in the workforce is right now and what we can expect in the new year. Wonderful question. I think the state of diversity is ongoing. You know, again, I referenced the George Floyd moment. We had organizations, companies and organizations across the country, if not across the world, who pledged to do something about diversity, both internally and externally. But some organizations followed through, other organizations, like so many people, just moved on to the next issue. I think that where we are in diversity, we're at this inflection point in which we need to start asking the bigger question about what can we do to make this world a better place? What can we do to make this workplace a better place? And more importantly, what can we do to tap into the perspectives of people from diverse, diverse backgrounds, whether it be minority backgrounds, whether it be members of the LGBTQ plus community, 
we have so much valuable input that we can share. But I think in order to get to a place where we're prizing diversity and we're making diversity into the best business element it can be, we have to be honest about where we are. So many good points. CEO of Greer Consulting and Labor and Diversity Consultant Jason Greer, thank you so much for joining us here on Morning Rush. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, Happy New Year. You too.